God's messenger for the hour, Mr. Turner. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Uh, now, there are a few more seats, and I, I believe there are some individuals in the overflow room. I would love to see their face in the place. There are about 10 seats, 12 seats, and uh, we're going to have a Holy Ghost good time. I was informed you get out of church about 12, 15. Amen. 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 I will try. I'll make no promises. I want to thank Jabari for his tie this morning. Amen. Amen. My, my, my wife packed all of my clothes. Amen. Amen. Someone got on my case this morning and said, yesterday, and he said, Mr. Turner, you should have packed your clothes. I said, well, that's all right. That's just how it goes. My wife and I work together. Amen. Amen. This morning, our message is entitled, The Journey. And I have some young people that are going to help me with the uh, reading of the Word of God. Because yours, yours truly has his contacts on, but he has left his glasses somewhere. And I brought two pairs of glasses with me on this trip. Well, I bought one pair and then bought, because those didn't work, so I bought another pair. But moving on, I, only, I have no glasses this morning. But I can see a tiny bit. I can see out there, fine. I just can't see the word like I want to. But God is good, amen? amen. The journey. We have seven parts to this morning's message. How many parts? Seven. seven sections. So when we get to number seven, you know it's time to go home, amen? Because the young folks want to eat. Yes. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Amen? amen. All right, all right, all right. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Oh, mercy. <laughs> and there was light. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Don't take any pictures, please. <laughs> My wife was saying, honey, what, are you, what, are you, what were you wearing, uh, dear? Uh, well, those were a, 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 a lady's glasses. A what? Amen. 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 You said you got a new tie, too. Yes, dear. <laughs> the journey, the journey. Let's open our Bibles, please, to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. This scripture, this scripture was read to me at Oakwood many a Sabbaths. Matthew 24 and verse 14. Matter of fact, and I'm going to ask everyone to scoot over. Scoot in, please. S-O-S. Slide over some. Scoot in. Scoot in. The, the, I'll scoot in so those coming in can have a seat. Amen. Amen. Come on over. Scoot over. It's good, it's, it's good to sit close together. We are going to be together in heaven. Amen. Amen. And I'm so glad this church, this church is multicultural. I'm, I am so excited. I don't know what to do with myself this morning. You see, when we get to glory, when we get to glory, I, I, I see it right now. There won't be a white side, and a black side, and an Asian side, and a Hispanic side. We're going to all be melted together. Amen. Amen. There's nowhere I read in the scriptures where it says, and the black folks are over there. This says there were 12 gates, but it does not say there are only 12 ethnic groups. A amen? Because I know there are, there are 12 different types of, of African, at least. So th that would take all the gates. That would leave everybody else out. And at least 12 different types of Europeans, and at least 12 different types of Asians. And how do I know I've been to Asia? Been to several countries in Asia, and I've enjoyed my ministry there. Amen. But Matthew 24 and verse 14, the word of God says, and this gospel of the what? Kingdom, Kingdom shall be what? Preached. Preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then what's going to happen? God has called us to preach the gospel. Now, I'm a quiet person when I sleep, <laughs> but something happens when I get behind the pulpit. I don't know. Something just happens. Maybe it was because of how I was taught at, at OC, that's Oakwood College. They said, if the fire is not burning, no one's going to come to see it. Amen? You either, you, either, you, either, you either sound the alarm or sit down and shut up. Amen? Uh, I would tell you a story, but we don't have time. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to start up seven parts to the message. The first section is entitled, No Breath. No Breath. That's going to come from Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. So if you're taking notes, write it down. No Breath. Part number two would be early training. Early training, Proverbs 22 and verse 6. Early training. Part three, early education. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. Section four, mid-education. Coming alive. Coming alive. James 1, verse 5. 
Section five, the change. Old change. You know that song, A Change Has Come Over Me? Come on now, let's have a little church today. Matthew chapter five and verse 16. Then we're going to look at the call. That's actually where we're going to start, the call. The call. And we will share with you a few verses from there in just a few minutes. And then we're going to have the appeal. It's very, very important. I'm, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you where we are going before we get there. Because he told me where to go. The first part of the appeal will be to dedicate your life to Jesus and his service. So you let the Holy Spirit start talk. If your seat starts getting warm, don't feel bad. I've already put the Holy Ghost on you. Dedicate your life to Jesus and his service. Part two of the appeal will be to dedicate your life 100%. You see, some of us in this, in this church have been only given God 90%. Amen, Walls. There's a song out that says 99 and a half won't do. It's an old gospel song. And some of us have only been given God 90%. Amen, Walls. Some of us students have only been given God 90%. They can A minuses when we should make straight A's. Amen. Yeah. Boys, it quiet in church today. <laughs> and the third section of the appeal is going to be to dedicate your life to Jesus and accept him as your Lord and your Savior. You see, in every church service, there should be an appeal for someone to give their life to Jesus. And I believe that somebody is going to stand up for Jesus today. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at section, section, section six that I told you about the call. Let us pray, Father God. You told me to start here, and I'm asking that you will take the message that you have given me this morning and that you will mold it and shape it. You have told me, you have told us that if you are lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. You've promised us that, that you will draw all men. And so this morning, in the name of Jesus, through the anointing of the Spirit, we're asking that each and every one of us, from the little bitty baby, the little Mr. T that I saw, that came in this morning, and the other baby that you will call them. Oh, they can't, they can't speak. They're just newborns. But they can hear the word of God, and their lives can be changed. I know because you called me as a child. You anointed me as a child to do what I'm doing today. So I'm calling those two babies that I saw. I'm calling all of the young children that I saw this morning. They're not here right now. They're in other rooms. But I'm calling them, Jesus. You're calling them. So speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen. 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 There's a little ring. You can turn down a little tiny bit. You see, I can preach without a mic, and that's okay. God gave me a trumpet, and, uh, and so I, I sound it aloud uh, when I have to every once in a while. I'm a quiet person. <laughs> Serena, don't laugh because you know I'm quiet. That's my student sitting right there. I brought two with me, and she knows I'm quiet. Amen, Serena? <laughs> Amen. The call. I'm not sure why she's laughing. I don't find anything funny. The call, the call, the call. You see, when I was in the, when I was in the, when I was in the seventh grade, I, I hadn't too long given my life to Jesus. And I started getting into the word of God. There's something that happens, young folks, when you get into the word. That's why every day we ask you, did you spend your time with Jesus? Because something happens to you when you get inside the word. Amen, Walls. It's okay to say amen. Because if you don't say amen, I preach an hour. If you say amen, I preach less. Amen? amen. All right, now I'm on the same page. All right, all right. So something began to happen to me. So some, I've got some readers this morning. They're going to read Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And I'm going to ask those readers to come up quickly. Come up quickly. Move quickly, please. Come up to the front. Where the Holy Ghost is, he's moving all throughout this room. Matthew chapter 5. As I began to read, starting with the gospel, something began to happen inside my life in the seventh grade. Matthew chapter 5. Who has the first few verses? Go for it. Preach the word. Blessed oh, are... Oh, I've got to tell you. I'm going to stop you in between. So you just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, they, they, they need... I don't need the mic. I'm good. All right, so go on, sister. Okay. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Are the what in spirit? Poor, poor in poor. spirit. You preach it, girl. Now, that's the humble. The humble in spirit. They're, hum they're, they're, not, they're not patting themselves on the back thinking they're all that and a bag of chips. You see, all God has to do is step back and you ain't nothing. That's good English. Keep, keep, keep reading the word. I'm sorry. 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yes, Lord. Blessed are those who mourn, yes. for they will be comforted. Yes, Lord. Blessed are the meek. The gentle, the gentle. <laughs> meek does not mean weak. Amen? Amen. 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 That's, why, that's why I share with you young men, you don't go around hitting on ladies. Amen? Amen. Treat them gently. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't go there. I have two daughters, and I, I told them, if the young man is not a gentleman, do not bring him home. Amen. Don't bring him home. Amen. Pants sagging. Hello. Or is it quiet in church today? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Oh, okay. For they will inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, yes. for they will be filled. Verse 7 now. The word of God says... Blessed are the merciful, mm. for they will be shown mercy. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Uh, hold on, hold on. The pure in heart? You know, there's something. There's something. Is, does anyone have a cell phone on them that I may borrow on right quick? I need to borrow a cell phone right quick. Right here. Here's a good one. Here's a good one. You know, sometimes, you know, there, you know, there was a problem years ago when people were saying, young men, watch what you see on the internet. Hello. Now you got to watch what you see on the telephone. On the telephone. <laughs> On the telephone. Am I telling the truth? Because you can pull any and everything up on this thing. Am I right? We got to dedicate our phones to the Lord. Amen. You either dedicate it to the Lord or get rid of it. Amen. If it's not helping you grow towards Jesus, it's helping you grow toward. There's no in between. So if your phone ain't helping you, get rid of it. Ladies, I don't know what y'all doing with y'all phone. But I know it's what the guys are doing. Blessed are the pure in heart, for yes, they will see God. Your preaching sister. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be the, called. What kind of makers? Peacemakers. You mean the hell raisers? <laughs> you know that word's in the Bible? Hell yeah, hell. Hell's in the Bible. Hell raisers? Hell raisers? Well, see, if they ain't a the peacemaker, they're hell raisers. See, I'm blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called the what? God has called us to be peacemakers. You're going to hear more about that in a few minutes because my mother was a hell raiser. But, oh, she was. I'm, I'm, it's okay. It's in the word. We'll give you Jesus. For they, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Yes. For theirs, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We got to move on quickly. Who has verse 13? Who's got verse 13? Go on. Verse, verse 13. Okay. For you are the salt of the earth. Come on, brother. If the salt loses its flavor, mm. how shall it be seasoned? It is good for nothing, nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. That's like eating some collard greens with no seasoning in it. <laughs> yeah, that's some nasty cooks, right there. It, it is nasty. Mm. Somebody cooked some greens for me and they said, Turner, why won't they eat the greens? I said, you didn't cook it right. You don't, you don't do greens like you do, like you do broccoli. Cook that stuff, amen? <laughs> cook it down. Put some seasonings in it. It ain't good for nothing without the seasonings. Amen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go on and preach, brother. You, oh, sorry. Yeah, you are the light of the world. Light of the world. A city that is set on the hill. Yes, sir. Cannot be hidden. Neither do men. Who has verse 15? I'll take verse 15. Go on, I'll preacher. <laughs> neither do men do what? Nor do the, oh, neither, oh, there's verse 15. Different translation, verse 15. Oh. Nor do they light a lamp yes, put it, yes, and put it under a basket, mm -hmm. but on a lampstand and gives light to all who yes. are in the house. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may be your, that may, that they may be your good, good works and glorify the Father in heaven. We're going to come back to verse 16 in a minute. Help these two nice young ladies down, please. Thank you, sir. Amen. 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 I'll take this, the microphone from the next person. Amen. So God, God began to move upon my heart. And as I began to read the word of God, something began to happen to me. I said, Lord, what is it? What do you want me to do? He says, Walter, I want you to preach the gospel. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. My reader, come back up, son, because that's your verse. Come on. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. You have, if you haven't, say amen. amen. Come on, turn quickly, turn quickly, because we don't want to be here all day. 1 Timothy chapter 4, the word of God says that faith comes by hearing and hearing of the what? Word. 
Amen. So we're going to get into the word. We're still, we're still at number six. Don't worry, the others aren't this long. Amen. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. The word of God says, what does it say, son? Let no one despise you. Let no one do what? Despise you. Despise you. Don't let anyone put you down because you're young. I do not get old. I'm a young man. Amen. I'm 55 years young. Amen. Keep going, preacher. But be an example to the But be a what? An example. He wants us to be an example. Amen. Let your light so shine that when others see you, they say, hey, you're something different about you. You see, when I, before I knew Jesus, I wore these short shorts. Hello, have mercy. They didn't put a spoon up the side. They had to be converted. But when, when I gave my heart to Jesus, my shorts got longer and the slit got sewn up. Amen. Mm -hmm. Be an example. Keep preaching, preacher. In conduct and love. In what? In, in conduct and love. You mean to me I should talk different? Mm -hmm. I should walk different? Mm -hmm. I shouldn't talk back? Mm -hmm. Lord. <laughs> I guess that means yes, right? Yes, sir. So when your mama says do something, you should do it, right? Yes, sir. And don't give, and don't give lip service, right? Yes, sir. Amen. Because if we give lip service, the, Lord of God, the word of God says I will cut your life short. That's in the Ten Commandments. You know that, right? Yes, sir. That's why we obey Mama, right? Yes, sir. Amen. His mother's in the audience too. <laughs> keep, keep preaching, preaching. What's the Word of God say? In spirit, in faith, in purity. Amen. Thank you, son. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Just, just step over here for a minute. Now, my favorite text. So, in the eighth grade, God called me and He says, "Turner, I want you to preach the gospel." So I said, okay, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to be a preacher one day. I'm going to tell others about the love of Jesus. And I'm going to preach everybody to hell. What? What? You see, years ago, years ago, that's what the Adventist church was all about. Preached everybody to hell instead of preaching everybody to Jesus. My mother said to me, she said, son, when you are converted... When you're converted, you can become a great preacher. I said, Mama, I am converted. No, son, when you're converted, you can become a great preacher. She says, she says, son, and I didn't understand it at first. And then finally she kept saying it, kept saying it. She says, son, you cannot win people to Jesus with salt. But the Bible says you're the salt of the earth. She says, son, you cannot win people to Jesus pouring salt in their sins. You got to pour ointment in their sins. Boys are quiet in church today. You see, when a young person or an older person does something wrong, don't beat them up. Did somebody beat you up? Come on, adults, talk to me. Were you perfect growing up? No. Did you make any mistakes? Yes. So I, I, so we shouldn't beat up the kids, should we? No. Boys are quiet in church. Okay, Matthew chapter 28, my text, my favorite text. Go for it. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Go and do what? Make disciples. Yeah, it says, go you therefore and teach. That's what it said. Go on, preacher. He, he memorized it. Baptizing them in yes. the name of the Father and of the Son, Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I shall be with you always, even until the end of the age. Amen. Thank you, son. Have a seat. That is why I do what I do. Because God says, Walter, I have commissioned you to go and teach. Go and make disciples. When I, when, I, when I got here in Phoenix, I got on my phone. I sent a, a text to one of my former students, and he met me at Walmart. He's one of the pastors in this area, Pastor Chris Morris. And then I text another one last night because I said, I need some clothes for church. And he says, how tall are you, Mr. T? I said, I'm 5'11". He said, I'm 6'2". It won't work. <laughs> but my students were willing to come out of their house and supply my needs. Because when I was their teacher, when I was their teacher, I did not beat them up with do this and don't do this and don't do this and don't do that. I showed them by example how to walk in Jesus. And now those same men are doing just that today. They're walking in Jesus, leading others to Jesus. And hopefully Zach will get here. He's about 6'2", married to a young lady from Russia. And, um, and he sings, boy, is that boy singing. Oh, man, I love to hear him sing. Yes, my kids are very, very close to me. So God gave me the commission to go and teach. So I started teaching in San Francisco. 
Then I went to Dallas, Texas. Las Vegas, Nevada. I gotta tell you a quick story right quick, quick story. While I was living in Las Vegas, we had been there about four years, and we're hoping to stay there for at least two more years and become debt free. Oh, no, no man, nothing. We're paying off our bills. Everything was going good. My wife had got a new job at an accounting firm. She was the head accounting of the accounting firm, making more money than me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and then the Lord said to me, Walt, I got a phone call one night, and he says, Walter, I want you to go to West Virginia. I said, Lord, there ain't nothing for me in West Virginia. It's only 3% chocolate. <laughs> 3%. I said, Lord, I don't want to go to West Virginia. Come to Macedonia. <laughs> I said, Lord, I don't want to go to West Virginia. Come to Macedonia. I said, Lord, before I go to West Virginia, I will die. And he said, no problem. I can take care of that. I'm sitting there in class one day, studying, studying for some higher levels of math and just having a good time in class, and all of a sudden class is over, and I began to get up, and, the, and the two of my study buddies said, Turner, you look like you've been drinking something, man. What, what you been drinking? I said, brothers, I don't drink anything stronger than, than seven up. Sprite, I don't have any of that heavy stuff. He says, brother, you look drunk. You look weary. You look like you're on something. What you been smoking, man? I said, look, you guys, you guys know I don't smoke. We don't smoke, none of us smoke. I got up. Grabbed my books and I started walking like this. They grabbed me, they said, Turn, you gonna be okay? Walked me to my car. And they got in my car, make a long story short. I said, Lord, what should I do? He says, Walter, go to the church and pray. So I go to the church, go into the prayer room, and I get down there on my knees and I said, Lord, what is it? What is it? He says, I told you to go to West Virginia. Lord, I don't want to go to West Virginia. You said I can take you out. I said, Yes, I did, but you know I didn't mean that. He said, I'm going to take you out. I said, Lord, please. Lord, I don't want to go to West Virginia. Please. Go to West Virginia, Walter. Go to West Virginia. So after the Lord and I had this discussion, and I began to battle with the Lord, I finally said, Lord, because I got sicker and sicker and sicker. Didn't have cell phone back in those days. to say, honey, call 911. Only 911 to call was Jesus. And so I called on Jesus, and he said, go to West Virginia. Soon as I said, Pastor, that I was going to West Virginia, the sickness left me. Wow. It just left. Yeah. Yeah. So I know if God puts a call on your heart, Shorty, yeah. you got to do what he says. Because yeah. if you don't do what he says, you'll be short. <laughs> uh, he's about 6'2". That's why I call him Shorty. Amen? So I go to West Virginia, from West Virginia to Savannah, to Savannah to Raleigh. School in Raleigh started with 17 students. At the end of two years, we had 72 saints, and there was no money from the government. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Then he sent me to Oakland. That's Oakland. And uh, from Oakland, he sent me to Stockton. And from Stockton, he sent my wife and I to Auburn, Washington. And, 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 and he said, Walter, I want you to grow academically this way. I have been growing academically this way. But he says, time for you to grow this way. And then from Auburn, Washington, he sent us to Lodi. I said, Lord, are you sure you want to send this brother of color to a place that has never seen a brother of color as an administrator? Walter, I, I told you we, we've had this discussion before. You go to Lodi. I said, okay, Lord. I said, all right. So I went to Lodi. And after three years, he said, Walter, it is now time to leave. Amen. And Dr. Warfield then called me to Memphis. Amen. 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 I thank God. Now, that's, that's, part, that's part six. Now, let's get down to part one. You ready for no breath? No breath. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. God says, and God formed man from the what? Dust of the what? And he breathed into him the what? The breath of life, and he became a what? A living soul. When I was born, when I was born, there was no life in me. No life. I was not breathing. They put me, they, they turned me upside down, hit me on my bum, bum, bum. And I didn't did, did nothing. They put me in warm water. They put me in cold water. And turned me upside down and hit me again and did nothing. Finally, after a few moments, they did it again and again and again. And I've been shouting for Jesus ever since. I can't help myself. So when the young man starts singing about praising the Lord, I can't help myself, folks. I can't. Because if, you don't, if I don't praise him, the rocks will. So I have to cry out. I have to praise him. 
Now my early training. My early training was rough. Proverbs 22 and verse 6. I believe someone was going to read that one, but we don't have time because time is running. It says, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they won't what? Depart. Well, well, this is what happened to me. I was trained early. My mother was, my mother was a party, and so was my daddy. They both drank and they both smoked. Matter of fact, I learned how to light cigarettes at the age of about five. Yeah. You go to the sink, go to the stove, and yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm not like that president that said he never inhaled. I inhaled. <laughs> Amen. I won't call any names. Life was rough. Life was rough. But I have a problem. I don't like the smell of smoke. Smoke bothers me. So I, and so I learned to, to slight the cigarette with my fingers. And the partying and the drinking, it was almost every Friday or Saturday night, parents got drunk. I remember as a little kid laying, laying in the car, but we had a station wagon and it had a little hump in the middle. And I, and I would get down behind my dad and I said, Lord, I said, Dad, turn the heat on, please. And he turned the heat on and the heat would come from the bottom and come from the top. And I'd feel the heat and then I would say my prayers. I said, Lord, maybe this is my last night because Daddy is drunk. He was walking like this. But he got to the car and every night we got home. No accident. Don't know how. Don't know how it happened, but we got home every night. That was an early education. That was an early training. Then there was an early education. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. I wish I had time to read it. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. It talks about the ant. It says, consider the ant, thou lazy man. How the ant works when no one tells him to work. Amen. Amen. The ant does not do 99%. The ant works 100% of the time. Are you hearing me, young folks? You see, that's why when I was at the Holbrook Mission, I was painting. Amen? And you were painting with me, some of you. And some of us even have the paint still with us. Amen? Yeah. Amen? <laughs> yes, some of the ladies have some nice paint in their hair. It looks beautiful. It has good color. And there were two ladies that worked and worked and worked. And the only reason they left, one of them their relative had to say, you need to go. Matter of fact, they were so tired. They was, one of them was so tired that when, after the first night, they, they walk about like this, and they put their head down and said, are you OK? Mm-hmm. Worn out, tore up, worn out, gave it all, gave it all. God wants us to give till we can't give anymore. Don't kill yourself, but give till you can't give anymore. But that's not how I was in my early education. You see, I was lazy. I was a third grader that didn't want to read, didn't want to work. I sat, I was in Northern California, and there was a little, this little blonde girl that sat in front of me, and she said, Walter, Walter, do your work. I said, I don't want to do any work. I don't want, Walter, please do your work. And she was a cute little girl. Walter, do your work, do your work. I don't want to do any work. Well, you can imagine what kind of grades I, I received. I got more. I got more American flags. I had more determines than anything else. I even had a few seeds. I had one A. I think it was in recess. <laughs> well, my mother, my mother got my report card, and the teacher said, Mrs. Turner, your son has not done very well, but we're going to pass him anyway. And she says, oh, no, he's going to stay. He's going to stay. And so is his sister. He's going to repeat the third, and she's going to repeat the fifth. So I, we repeated the third and the fifth grade. Mother got me home, and she gave me some education. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Right. Amen? The word of God says you spoil the child, you spoil the brat. Now, she didn't kill me, but she did give me some love and attention. And she said, don't you bring another D or F to this house? I said, yes, ma'am. So I didn't. I did bring some C's, but no more D's and F's. Amen? Amen? So I repeated third grade. Moved to Compton, California. Isn't that a great city? <laughs> Highest crime rate in the per capita back in those days. But Compton is where things really began to come alive. Because in James chapter 1 and verse 5, we've got to read James 1 verse 5. James 1 and verse 5. James 1 and verse 5. Is it on the screen? James chapter 1 and verse 5. James chapter what? One. And verse 5. The word of God says that any man lacks wisdom. Let him ask of who? God, God that gives all men what? Liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. I said, Lord, I'm not that bright. I need, 
I don't want to be a statistic. I don't want to be the average brother with his pants hanging down and, you know, walking down the street like he, you know, got all that. Uh, I don't want to be like that, Lord. I want to be an educated brother because I want to marry an educated sister. Amen. And I want to have educated sibling, uh, si uh, uh, children. Amen. And that's what God gave me. Amen. He gave me a good wife who graduated summa cum laude, and I graduated, thank you, Lordy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I tried. I tried. I just didn't try hard enough when I was at Oakwood. I was too busy. Too busy. Yeah. That's all we got to say. Amen. But something came alive in the fifth grade. I had a teacher. I had a teacher. She caught my attention. Something just, I just thought I was intelligent. I started reading. They said, if you want to hide something from a person of color, you put it in a book. Hello. Those of us that don't like to read. Amen. Yeah, I'm talking to you this morning. Read, please. It will open up doors for your life. Amen. The change. Verse 5, section 5. Section 5, the change. The change began. The change came. The change was not with me. The change was with my mama. I told you my mother was a hell raiser. My mother was married to a sailor. And if you know anything about sailors, sailors talk real bad, OK? My mother talked, spoke bad, too. She, she cursed. She fussed. Oh, it was just bad. We would, we would get up, and we would clean the house, and then go outside to play so we couldn't hear mama talk, because she raised a lot of, yeah. But there's something happened. There was this little, little, little lady who came across the street. Her name was Sister Willis. Sister Willis began to share Jesus with my mother. And as she began to share Jesus with my mother, something began to happen to my mother. My mother began to stand up differently. She began to talk differently. She began to, she began to talk, speak to us differently. She, she, she didn't throw as many things at us when we did things wrong. You know how, you know how back in those days, you roll your eyes, you get something thrown at you? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad somebody knows what I'm talking about. There's a hole in the door at 1812 Killing Place in Compton that my dad patched up. The hole is still in the door because I went by the house and checked it out years later. It's still there! They didn't change the door. Well, they covered up the hole my dad did, but the, the imprint is still there. All I did was roll my eyes. You don't roll your eyes. Amen? Amen. Well, Sister Willis began to give my mother Jesus. And I said, Lord, I want what my mother has. So I began to get into the word. And that's where I come to section six. Because as I began to dive into the word of God, something began to happen and change me from the inside out. Are you hearing me this morning? It began to change me from the inside out. That's when God says, Walter, I want you to preach. I want you to teach. In the ninth grade, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I was going to be a teacher. I knew it. I was going to be a preaching teacher, and I was going to go around the world because God says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in how much of the world? Oh. All the world. My children and I, we have been, we, we, we have, we've been to Asia. We've been to, some of them have been to uh, Europe. They've been to Africa. The only place we have not been to is Antarctica. Amen. <laughs> and one of these days I may get down there. Amen. Amen. But please, young people, please. If you learn nothing else this morning, God has called you. God has done what? Called. He has called you. Let no man despise you because you're young. Let no one put you down because you're young. Yes, you're going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I'm 55 and I still make mistakes. I still don't get the time, get, uh, get, get, get to the bus on time. I'm trying, Sister Warford, I'm trying. Amen. And they're going to leave me one of these times. I know it. I know it. But I'm determined that I'm going to be on time. Amen? Because those that are perpetually late will not make it into glory. If you're perpetually late, you will not make it to glory. Be on time. Be on time. So this morning, I must ask, is there someone here this morning that says, Lord, I've heard the call from Mr. T. I've heard the call. He wasn't breathing as a little kid. His early training was bad. It was bad. Maybe it's like yours. Maybe your early training was not the best. But that's no excuse, because God can do anything with anybody. We don't have any money. We don't have this. We don't have that. It's OK. 
Our parents were on welfare, but we didn't stay on welfare. We took the welfare, we got a hand up, we said we don't need it anymore, and then we moved on. Amen? Amen. My, early, my early education was, was, was rough. I, I had bad grades in school. I repeated the third grade. By the time I got to the fifth grade, education came alive. By the time I was in the, 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 the uh, sixth, sixth grade, I was dancing at the first part of the year. I can't dance. But when I gave my life to Jesus, the Lord said, Walter, you can't do what you used to do. It wasn't what the church said. It's what the Holy Spirit put on my heart. I said, Lord, what, why? Walter, what's related to the dancing? It was the drinking. It was the partying. It was the smoking. Give it up. I said, Lord, but I like the music. I like, I like James Brown. I like Luther Vandross. I, you know, I, I like all them brothers. I, you know, I liked all that stuff back in those days. I, I liked it. Matter of fact, living in Memphis, I can, you know, you, you, you hear the music when you go to the, you go to the grocery store. And, and you hear it when you go out to eat. There's one restaurant my wife and I love to eat at. And you hear it. And, and all of a sudden, something will come back. And, I, and, 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 and the old me will ring up. I said, Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> and then sometimes I got to watch myself because my body wants to move a little bit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know what happens when you, when you, when you converted folks get up and get, get on skates? You don't dance right now, but when you get on skates, you dance. Am I right? Am I, am I, am I prophesying this morning? Yeah. Something happened to us. We start, we start, you know, we start, <laughs> start doing our thing on the gate. Now, we don't dance. We get on skates and something happens to us. I said, Lord, convert my feet. I did not learn to really dance until I gave my heart to Jesus. My sister said, Walter, what's wrong with you? What happened to you? I don't know. I said, I got it. I got it now. <laughs> but in the sixth grade, I was living one way. Oh, what I did not tell you. At the sixth grade, what age is that? My dad had his first kid when he was 13. And I was headed the same way. If God had not called me at 13, There'd be little Walters running around. I'm sorry, they'd be big now. My dad had his first one at 13. Now you see why I'm so serious about walking with Jesus. Because I was going the same way as my dad, the same way as my mother. No dancing, dancing in the first part of the year. I gave my heart to Jesus. And the kid said, Walt, why aren't you dancing? I said, I gave my heart to Jesus. Well, you don't dance anymore? I said, no, I don't dance anymore. I gave it up. I gave it up. I've got a new way of walking. I've got a new way of talking. It's not about do's and don'ts. It is about my relationship with him. As my relationship with Jesus grows, there are certain things that I say they got to go. They just got to go. Amen. It's not about do's and don'ts, young people. It's about how close can I get to Jesus. I say it kindly. You going to see any angels doing that in heaven? I'm just being real. Can, let's get real. Are the angels, can you see the angels in heaven before the throne of God doing, 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 doing them dances? No. Okay, I'm, I'm being real. Can you see the angels in heaven playing some of the games we play? No. Okay, I'm just getting real. So I had to give it all to Jesus. So my appeal this morning, my appeal this morning, will any of you say yes to Jesus? Will any of you stand this morning and say, I want to dedicate my life to Jesus and his service? Will you stand with me this morning and say, I want to dedicate my life to Jesus and his service. I want to dedicate my life to Jesus and his service. You don't have to stand for anybody between you and the Lord. Now, my second call, will you dedicate and say, I have not been giving the Lord 100%. We've got a month and a half of school left. A month and a half of school left. Eighth graders. If you don't put the metal to the pedal when you get into high school because you have not put the metal to the pedal, high school is going to wear you out. Everyone's grades drop a little bit in the ninth grade, but they don't have to drop so far to where you say, Lord, what happened? What happened? See, my grades kept climbing. Not that I'm so smart because I'm, I'm an average person, but I said I've got to get more than 50%, more than 75%. God says 99 and a half won't do. Father God, 
Let us pray. Father God, there are some this morning that need to get out, come out of their seat and say, I've been stealing. I've been cheating my teachers. I've been stealing from my parents and others who have been paying my tuition. I've been stealing. Forgive me for being a thief. It may be a third grader this morning that's listening. It may be a first grader. It could be an eighth grader. It could be someone that's in the extra room that needs to leave that room and come to the, to the, to the stage, come to the altar and say, Lord, I want to stop playing school. Maybe it's a member that is not active in the church and says, I want everybody else to do the work. I just want to come to church and leave. I just want to come to church and leave. God is not calling us to do that. Oh, no, he's not. He wants us to give 100%. Jesus gave 100%. He gave all as a man. He gave all as God. And he opened his arms real wide. And he says, Father, I give it all because I love you and I love your children. Please, if you know that you're one that has not been giving 100%, come forward with me and say, Lord, I wanna give 100. You know who you are. Come forward. I wanna give 100, Lord. The Bible says, for it is God which works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. We cannot do it of our own. We need the anointing of the Spirit of God. So please, dear God, is there someone this morning that will say, I, will, I want to give 100%. I'm going to try to give 100. I'm going to try. Is there just one? Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, you've called, you're calling, you've called these men. You've called these men, you've called this young lady. you called them, they want to give 100%. I know, I know what's happening in this church. I know this church is taking off. I can see it. It's not only multicultural, it is multi-work. The pastor and the members are doing a great job here. They're coming forward, Lord. The believers are giving Bible studies, and, the, and then the believers are giving, the new believers are giving Bible studies to the new believers. Lord, it's happening. But you're asking for each and every one of us to give 100%, okay. not 90%, Lord. Some of us are coming with baggage this morning. It might be drinking, it might be smoking, it might be our, 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 our telephone, it might be the internet, it might be our computers, it might be our academics. I don't know what it is, Lord, but we need to give 100% to you. Please, Jesus, push us out of our seat and bring us forward. And then I plead, Lord, that those that want to say, I want to give my life to Jesus in baptism, yes, to come forward. Yes, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. We know the song. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, not coming to Mr. T. I'm just a lump of clay who's made a lot of mistakes today. But come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. And say, Lord, Turner has shown what you've done in his life. I want you to do the same thing and greater things. Because you promised it. You promised that in the last days we would do greater things than what you did. You raised the dead. You gave sight to the blind. Lord, you promised us that we would do greater things, and I'm claiming that anointing this morning. So this morning, Lord, I'm asking calling first the young people that have never given their life to you. I'm coming down to where they are, Lord. They need to come to you, Father. They need to come. Tomorrow is not promised. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus just now.
talk to him, everyone. Just now, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. He will save you. He will save you. Jesus will save you. Jesus will save you. Just now. going to belinger the appeal but we know there are individuals that have their seat is warm they're standing right now they're, they're nervous they're wondering what their mama or daddy's going to say when they get home you gave your life to Jesus I thought you were going on a mission trip and you gave your heart to Jesus yes Lord I gave my heart to Jesus because Jesus you said if I love mama or daddy more than you, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of you. Please, Lord, we want to be worthy through the covering of Christ's righteousness. So we come to you. We come. We come. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done. And we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.